I call this sermon this morning, Chaos or Creation, um, and this is a little bit different from what I've usually done with sermons, so we'll see how this goes. But how would you define theory? I looked up the definition of theory, and there are about as many definitions of theory as there are theories in this world, and that's quite a few. But one of the definitions says it is a carefully thought out explanation using the scientific method of bringing together many facts and hypotheses. Then it says right after that, commonly speaking, theory is used mostly in reference to something highly speculative. So if you're speculating, I don't think you're really dealing on facts, but maybe, maybe. Theory is also defined as an idea, a conjecture, a speculation, or assumption based on experiences, etc., but not on facts. So, my dad used to tell me, if you hear conjecture or people saying things that are based on assumptions or random thoughts, take it with a grain of salt. That was his favorite expression. Just take it with a grain of salt. In other words, don't base your life decisions or choices in life on those things because there is really no fact or basis to it. There's no truth in it. Now, theories can be interesting, and they can even ignite a lot of thought and discussion and, on a subject, and it can challenge our lives. However, we have to remember that a theory, as most theories are, are not proven, and they're only that, they're theories. Every organization that I know of pays big dollars to have idea people in their employ. Even churches do this. They go out and hire idea people to, to, get, to figure out new ways to attract people to church. So I guess Jesus isn't enough of an attraction. You have to find other things to attract people, which I guess I'll, that's up to them. But these people come up with theories and then a brain trust sits down and works with these theories to see if they can be effective or, or how they will work or if it'll bring about the desired result or any things like that. And so theorists come up with a theory many times and some of them spend their life trying, trying to prove their theory to be right. The problem comes into play when theorists don't do due diligence in their investigation because they want to promote their theory and to have merit and value. Many theorists want their theory to be valid or validated whether or not it carries any merit. And sadly in this world, there are a lot of people who will willingly do that, help them with that. So since the beginning of time, many people have put forth theories on the earth or this world and its origin or how it came into existence. Someone theorized that the earth was flat at one time, and you can still find people today, believe it or not, that will adamantly defend the idea that the world's flat. Interesting. Others have theorized how this world came into existence and they come up with some real doozies. And so this morning, we're going to look at two theories and one authentic account of how the world came into existence. George Henry Joseph Edward, I'm going to butcher this name, but anyways. George's Henry Joseph Edward Lemaitre, a Catholic priest, a mathematician, an astronomer, a professor of physics, at the Catholic University of Louvain, came up with this theory called, that is now titled, the Big Bang Theory. Okay? I'm not going to go and, and tell the whole story, but I just want to give you the general thought behind the theory. That, and, the, it, and it's not that there was this great explosion like some people think. His idea was that there was this one atom, one little atom, and the energy and the heat in this atom caused it to expand, okay? Now, I don't know about you, 
But when something expands, what usually happens? It, it stretches, it stretches to, its, to the ability that it can stretch and then there's no more stretch and poof, right? If it keeps expanding. So his theory is that there's this one atom that expands and, um, and it continues to expand. They want you and I to believe that everything that is visible in this universe exists from one atom, a small teeny little atom, that simply expanded and expanded and continues to expand and all of these things just exist from it. Also, you know, so, so you have the animal life, the sea life, you have the human life, you have plant life, and then you have all the insects and the millions of species that they are, and, 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 and it's just, it goes on and on, and then the earth and the water and everything the way it is, the moons, the suns, the entire universe, out of one atom, it just kept expanding. So flesh and blood and animals and life and human life and plant life and every other life and everything, the earth and the water and all of these things, all of that came out of this one atom. I don't know, they didn't tell me who made that atom or how that atom got there. They didn't, they didn't explain that yet. But let's, let's not stop there. If you dig deeper, the theory that is promoted as real, being real, is not supposed to be questioned by the scientific world because it's based on science. So from the expanding atom came the organized universe that we know, the sun in its place, the moon in its place, uh, uh, the different things that the moon and the sun do with the earth to help the water levels and all of those things. And also from that expanding atom came order in this world. And it came, if you can imagine, and we've experienced this in the congregation here just lately, a couple of times, the birth of a child from this atom just made that all somehow happen. Uh, Brad and I were talking it last week and he said, you know, it takes a whole lot more faith to believe that than the faith in God. And I'm like, amen. But um, they say that all of this has happened. That's the, that's the essence of the Big Bang Theory. Now, it continues to expand, so it's only going to get more and more and more. That's what they're saying. And from all of that came all of this life and different... Um, different DNAs and different flesh and different bloods and all of that stuff. Now, it's a theory. They've replaced creation in the school with this theory. Think about that, what they're teaching your children. And that was by a Catholic priest came up with this when he's supposed to be preaching about God and honoring God to the people. Now, the second one, and it's tied in with this, but it's different, is evolution. Of course, we all know Charles Darwin came up with this idea of evolution. And again, I can't possibly cover all of the things. I got reading this on the internet, some of these things and what, what they believe. And it got to me so bad, I just had to shut it down and stop because it, it's ridiculous, the things that they would like you to believe, but I'll mention some of them. The idea is by natural selection, the fittest of organisms would produce offspring. And so as organisms got weaker and there came stronger ones, the, the, these organisms would evolve and would become something else. And here's, a demo, here's an illustration that you won't find recorded because Darwin was basically laughed at, laughed at for this. But he said, the black bear that swims in the water with his mouth open and catches the bugs on the water, he says, why wouldn't it evolve into the big blue whale? And so the legs became fins and, and the tail became a, the tail of the whale and all of this stuff, okay? He said that man has evolved 
from the monkey. Or there's also the idea that man may have evolved from the fish. So maybe our real great, 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 great ancestors would be the bear. I'm not sure how that all works. But literally this theory was that completely different life forms could come into existence from the same ancestors. So when you, when you have two cows that come together, they could have a horse. Yes, I don't know, something like that. But all of this would take billions of years. Charles Darwin, before he passed from this world, retracted his theory and said it was simply a theory. And it is now taught as fact in schools. What they want us to believe, they want us to believe somehow over billions of years, um, we came into existence coming from a different kind of animal. They want us to believe because a bear can swim in water and catch insects that it became a fish. They, they have no facts for this. They have no real proof of any of this. It is just a theory. And if you think rationally about this theory, it doesn't take but a minute to start realizing what it is and to punch holes through it. It is assumptions, conjectures, and nothing else. Because, I want you to consider this, in both of these theories, where has the spiritual nature that we have even been considered? Are they saying that our spiritual nature evolved from a bear or a fish? That's, in, in, that's what they're really trying to say. Not to mention that the DNA of an animal does not become a human DNA. It never has and never will. It doesn't work that way. It can't work that way. And so if we evolve from animals, that leaves out the bigger part of who we really are, if you th consider that. It means that you have faith in something that has no basis, no fact, and cannot be proven. So these two theories in this world that man has come up with go against the idea of creation and intelligent design. Creation is not a theory. It's an actual account of how this world came into existence, and I'll show you how. When we speak of creating something, we're speaking of an action or a process of bringing something into existence that did not prior, exist prior to the action or the process. Genesis 1 and 2 tells us that God said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let there be an expanse, and he called the expanse heaven. He said, let the waters under heaven be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And he created vegetation, he created animals. And last of all, I mean, he created the sun, the moon, the universe. And then, last of all, he created man. Well, some people say, well, this was only written by man. And I, I think I can refute that. It was written down by man, but it comes from God. Because man didn't go to God to find out. God came to man and told him through people like Job and Abraham and Moses and other people. He came and told us about him and his creation. We didn't go ask him about it. And, and so there's two things in this creation, in God's creation, that speak to it being created by an intelligent being. We won't even have to say God, we'll just say an intelligent being for now. The design of this world is incredible. An expansion of an atom over billions of years, and they say precisely 3.5 billion years, I don't know how they came to that number, um, cannot possibly produce a design that is in our universe. The purpose of the plants, the sun, the moons, and the rest of the things in the universe. Doctors and true scientists will tell you that there are things within the design of our bodies that are too complex and intricate 
to have possibly come by a simple expansion of an atom. That it shows intelligent design and it shows being created. And so these things, if they're created this way, that eliminates those theories. And so Genesis tells us about the intelligent design. And the other thing that creation explains to us that the Big Bang Theory cannot explain is the order of things. I don't care if you call it an explosion. I used to laugh because someone would come to me and say Big Bang. And I said, oh, OK, let's try that out. Let's see how that works. So I said, you take a bunch of metal, put it all together in a pile here, and throw a stick of dynamite in it. Boom. Do you have a Swiss watch? You don't. You have a mess. <laughs> you have chaos. So whether it's an expansion or an explosion, you do not get order. The moon plays a role in the levels of the seawater and how, how the, the seawaters um, react in certain situations. The earth on its axis is tilted just at the right angle so that there's enough gravitational pull to hold us on this earth and we don't fly off into space, but at the same time, not too much gravitational force that would pull us and make us, mash us into the earth. Think about that. How does that just happen? It doesn't. It talks about design. The cycle of a tree's life going dormant in the fall as we're seeing it right now. And next spring it's going to bloom and the leaves are going to come on it and it's going to be a beautiful tree. That just happened? Or is it designed? There's so much to be said concerning God and his creation that we cannot begin to explain how he did it, but we can accept the fact that he did do it, that he created it as he tells us he did. Because it's a whole lot easier to accept that than to accept the Big Bang Theory or evolution. Everyone in this world has to choose whether or not they are going to believe man-made theories without facts or proofs or believe in God who created us and came down and told us about it and told us how to live to his glory and honor. Physically speaking, scientists and doctors both tell us that there is something different about our creation over other animals. I wonder why. Do you remember God telling us in Genesis that he made us special? He made us different than the animals? And then the thing that um, they are talking, they're talk, the other thing they're talking about is the spiritual nature that we have within us. I always say that God left a special spot in each one of our hearts for himself to live in us through his spirit. And, and nothing in this world can fill that spot or satisfy the urge of that spot. We have a spiritual nature along with our physical nature. The theories we've looked at this morning are both missing that key element in their theory. They're missing the element of spirituality. As physical beings, we should not be surprised because physically we cannot fully understand the spiritual unless we're connected with God. And so physically desiring to, to find out how this world came into existence, we're limited. We can only go so far and think of so much. That means that Everyone who tries to explain the existence of the physical side of nature and does not consider the spiritual side will always come up short. On the other hand, God is himself spirit and he answers our need to be satisfied in our spiritual nature. God is the only one being spirit that has those answers and can give us those answers. That special place in our heart where God dwells in us through his spirit, Romans 8, 11, can only be explained by God. If you are truly looking at the facts and truth of our existence, you cannot eliminate the spiritual nature we have.
So God, you know, God challenged Job. He asked Job. Job was complaining to God, and he said, why are you doing this, and why are you doing this, and I don't understand. And, and he came to Job, and he said, can you be majestic like I am? He said, can you clothe yourself like I've clothed you? He said, oh, and, and just think of this. He said, you know the behemoth or the leviathan, those mighty creatures that no one can tame, that no spear, that a spear doesn't bother, that an arrow doesn't bother. Um, they're so strong, their bones are like iron. He said, can you control them? Of course you can't. He said, I made them and I control them. They're like a little puppy to me. God is the only one that can give us the answers to creation. And it doesn't, it doesn't answer some of our questions maybe of how he did it, but we don't need to know how he did it. We just need to know that he did it. And the only thing that explains our existence in a practical, pragmatic way with facts and proof is that God created everything and it is his. We are created by God to live for him and to be his children. If you want to study more on that, we can, we can look at that, but there's a whole lot of things out there that you can study. But if you want to, we can help you with that. If you want to make changes to your life this morning, or you want to come to God, or, or you have a struggle that we could, you think we can help you with, let us know. And we invite you to come to do that now as we stand and sing. You are